Good morning everyone. We're continuing on our Birmingham City tour and I'm heading towards the uh, the jewelry quarter from the Cathedral Square area. And I just came across this place. Here's the tramway. Look at the way the, the grass is and all the structure and the buildings. And you see the tram up ahead. It's very, very well designed. The architecture here is very interesting. Like this is this is really nice. And uh, we're gonna head on. It's a, I'd say it's a probably about a 20 minute walk from the town. Anyways, I just wanted to show you this part. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what the jewelry quarter's like. It's uh, it's steeped in history. It's it goes back to the um, 18th century, so it's 250 years old. Um, so we'll go and explore what it's all about in the next little few minutes. Look at this tram drive by. Approach the corner of the street. We're hitting into the uh, the jewelry uh, the jewelry quarter of uh, Birmingham. Steeped in history, like I said, it goes back to the 18th century. Um, to this day, it's still renowned for the uh, the jewelry uh, manufacturing um, in Birmingham and out of the UK. And they, they, you can even come here and take classes as you know a tourist on your own jewelry making and they allow you to make your own piece of jewelry so it's easy to come to uh, it's been about a 15 minute walk 20 minute walk I'm gonna maybe want to head back to town I'm gonna try to maybe jump on one of the uh, the trams or subways or that so here we are in the section here we're gonna walk around to the end I see a Sikh temple and Let's just walk around this way and see what we have. And then supposedly there's a clock tower that I want to go see. That's really something special. In the background, if you see, look way back in the background, you can still see the library. So, like I said, it's, it's not that far. You can walk around. You don't have to use taxis or that, as long as you have two good, strong feet, legs. Um, don't mind doing probably about 20,000 steps. That's about what I'm averaging a day. But I'm doing a lot of walking and that, so I have my good old hiking boots with me. Straight from Nepal slash um, Ben Nevis. They're getting to the end of their trail, but I, they're just so comfortable. The treads are a little bit worn on it, but the button factory. AJ Smith's. See the old buildings? And they have uh, still like the cobblestone type uh, footpaths. Bullion store. So you can buy your modern jewelry here. Okay, Thomas Fatorni Limited. Badge and Metalworks. Okay. Let me just, uh, there's the clock tower up there. I can see it right here, so we'll head that way. Make a big thumbnail. Nice old buildings. Like I said, it goes back to 250 years. If you want to buy some jewelry, this is the place to come. It's a nice little townhouse. Right beside the mansion. Mansion spa. So. Three milliliter Dermio fillers for only 549 pounds. Alrighty. I think I'll give that one a pass. We buy gold for cash. There you go. www.loisbullion.com Bullion Britannia It's like a modern building, but they use like the older style bricks. I don't know if I'm gone with it. And these are back to the older side. Safety Deposit Center. So, 
they keep the uh, deposits of uh, customers here. Look at this, we got this thing. The Victoria restaurant. He's like emeralds. I don't know where that is. Must have been an old one. I don't see it. There's a Costa Coffee. I just stopped and got a Costa Coffee before I came here. Cappadocia, Turkish. I'd like to go to the Cappadocia caves and that sometime. I know the guy I follow, uh, Gabriel Traveler. He's just been there not too, too long ago. You know, I like to uh, be able to do what he does travel around, explore the world. And here we come to the Clock Tower and Rosa Villa Tavern. So, established 1836, the bank, on the corner of Frederick Street and Forestone Lane. Does the clock keep time yet? Yeah, I think so, it's 5 past 11 it says. Let's just see, maybe I can get a thumbnail here. There we go. Let's take a walk around and see the old buildings. Um, I'm gonna start by crossing over here on the zebra crossing. We'll cross over, see the little bank go down this way, and move around. And here we have a whole bunch of diamond stores. Let's look at this first. Marlowe's. River Mounts Jewelry. Discount gold is over. Cheaper than RRP. Diamond Dealers. Wonder if they have prices in order. Let's go take a look at the crack. There we go. 680 pounds for that one there. There's diamonds. 1530 for the, the one on the top left. There's a diamond glitter. It's closed. A bit the bullion room. It's a rebuy gold. Birmingham bullion. So you see, it's not just that one street. Look at it, and it goes on there. Every single one are all jewelry stores and jewelry stores and gold dealers. And so today's a good place to go. Nine carat is 19, 18 is 38, and 22 is 46, 45. There's the bullion. Take it, they buy your old stuff, melt it down, take the impurities out, and probably sell it to a dealer who re recreates some new piece of jewelry. And here we go. So we cross over here. I think there's not much happening. That's it. Like, I, I honestly didn't really know what to expect. Let me know in the comments if you've been here before or if it's on your list. I didn't really know about it, and I, I thought maybe, okay, it would have like a street with a few factories or something, but not to this level. Like, these are all, like, there must be hundreds of jewelry stores. There's no quarter rings, like, 365. It's not that bad, actually. 265. Yeah. We buy gold. Gold is a commodity that never loses really value, you know, especially with the markets and the economy and stuff like that. And the big thing uh, with the cash money, like, I think it's just a joke, but if you have a hero to handle gold or silver or platinum in your hands, you know, it's guaranteed. I know I saw one guy, he had quite a lot of money in his bank and I think it was in the UK as well and he just wanted to see just for the crack what would be 500,000 pounds look like because he wanted to get something and it was going to be that he went and he tried to get it from the bank 
and I think after two and a half months, he was only able to get like a hundred thousand pounds. They couldn't actually give him the five hundred thousand. So it's almost like these the, the money doesn't really exist, cash money. It's all digital now. So you wonder what the value is, but the gold, silver, platinum, you know, they hold the value there. It's tangible. Um, so that's why it's always very, very sought after. Same thing with art. A lot of people uh, keep art collections. That's something and everything that's tangible that usually goes up in value. Artful expressions. Everything's Regent. Regent Row, Regent Place, Regent Lane, Regent Street. SP and Greens and Company. Jewelry Designers. Here's an Apple store. And another jewelers. Coffee tails. I've had a Nerf coffee today to ask me. Maybe a juice or something, or if I could find a, a bubble tea. Maybe I'll wait till I get to uh, Chinatown. That'll be the next vlog coming up. I'll be doing the uh, Chinatown in Birmingham and then follow that, finishing up with the with the dinner with some friends at an award-winning restaurant. So if you want to follow the uh, Birmingham series, they'll all be uh, together linked up so you can watch them in a reel if you want don't forget to hit the subscribe button here's some more jewelry stores there's so many like and this is a Monday so it'd be a relatively quiet day normally and then let's see keep going on there's actually quite a lot of buildings here What's uh, the Turkish barber? So I think we're getting out of it here. Pops over this part. And yeah, I think this is getting out of it now. There's still some nice buildings that you can walk around and see on Spencer Street. And then here's the jewelry quarter. Where we are. And there's the clock that we were at. So we walked up, up here. And then, Consulate of India is here. Oh, didn't know that. And then they have a museum of the jewelry quarter, which is just at the end, on uh, the end of Branston Street and V, v Street. Tell me if I'm pronouncing that right, I don't know. Anyways, let's keep going. So we've seen there's a few uh, coffee shops, and uh, here's another one, Niche Cafe. So you have a few coffee shops to ponder over your purchases. If you're thinking about buying in that engagement ring or whatnot, you can sit in, have a coffee, and think about it. You know, I guess with the competition, your prices would be very reasonable, you know. There's another bunch of golds. Really nice. One to one with Meeks and Company. Instant valuations. Some wristwatches. They've sort of gone out of style, I'd say. Some more Tiffany's diamonds. Cross over here. We walk up this little lane. Like I said, lots of stops, lots of shops in that to uh, browse if you're looking for some piece of jewelry. Or if you want to flog some old jewelry. People are doing both.
wonder if that's a real Rolex. <laughs> Little steps to another row of uh, shops, and then we're making our way back towards the clock tower. Hopefully, the wind's not too strong, it's very windy. I got my uh, dead cats on my uh, GoPro, they should help a bit, but they're getting a little worn. I need to upgrade and change them. So, here's a little greenery to sit and relax, have a coffee. the top jewelry. Some big chains in the background. Jeez. Here's the urban cafe bar and kitchen. And Luncini. Lunchi. Lunchi jewelry. In the quarter. So you can have a baguette. We have wine and everything in here. Specialist engagement and wedding jewelry. And down in quarter. So we came back from there. We're getting close to uh, full circle around the jewelry quarter. Now I might have missed some. If there is some nooks and crannies that goes around the uh, the whole area, like you say, the museum's on the edge of it. I won't be going to do the museum tour. If you want to book it yourself, you just look on the Google for the jewelry quarter uh, museum. I'll put the links in the description. So. We, you want to do some research on it. So we're back at the Rosa Villa Tavern. It's a really nice building. Really well maintained. So we'll go up to this church. The chapel in the back there. And uh, see the street there. And then that should be the end of the uh, this walk. Let's stay tuned and see what else we see. Free cash withdrawals. Okay, here's Beast Street. This is where the, uh, the museum should be, somewhere around here. No bank. It's still being used as bank. And there's some uh, fish and chips there, naked chicken, some nail place, and then a restaurant. And then we're getting out of the, the jewelry part and more into little shops and boutiques and there's the barbers. Barber wanted, so you want to get a job as a barber, you work in the jewelry quarter. Make all your money and buy some jewelry. Okay. I thought this was a chapel, but obviously not. Tibbet's able, so it's obviously a reused building. Let's take a look at it. There's no access private entry. Uh, so it was a chapel because you look, there's graves in the back. Too bad we can't get in. I wonder if it's a build uh, apartments or let's we'll see what the plaque says. Cemetery Lodge. By 1845, Birmingham's population had increased so greatly the finding of space to bury the dead was becoming a problem. A new Church of England cemetery was constructed. This lodge built in 1849 formed its main entrance. There was a living accommodation for the secretary on the right hand side of the gates and offices on the left with room for the director's meetings above the gateway. Formerly the cemetery land had been excavated for sand into the sides of the largest sand pit were built the catacombs which can be seen. St. Michael's Church, which stood above them, and it was demolished in 1950. So there's the little history book. That was pretty cool. So here you see the uh, tombstones and the grave markings and the uh, tomb the catacombs. This is right behind the Hockley Mint. There we go. So that's been the... Uh, that's been the... Um, the tour of the jewelry quarter. Let me know if you liked it, if it's something interesting. Like I said, I've tried to hit a bit of everything for everyone's interest, just to give you an idea of what Birmingham's like. Like it is the second largest city in England. Um, you know, I've had uh, nothing but a good time so far. People seem to be very friendly. There's, I know there's a, 
higher crime rate than a lot of places and that, but I guess you have to also, you know, look out for yourself and don't go to silly places at silly times and maybe don't drink too much. Uh, use uh, Uber's uh, taxis, or, you know, to get around if it's late at night. But, you know, it's very, very, very good little city. So stay tuned for the next vlog coming up. Okay, I walked on this uh, road. I saw a few more little jewelry shops on both sides heading out out of the jewelry um, quarter to the, where the tube station is for the metro sign to see if I can get in how much it costs and to get back in towards the city center um, see what it's like um, jewelry arms let's go across and see what's it like to get into this station and how you go about uh, purchasing a ticket and if it goes to where I want to go. Next stop will be the city center and hopefully Chinatown. Purchased a ticket and it was two pounds 90. Um, it says valid for one journey, it's a day return. So, but I'm not sure. This, I think this is only two stops from here to Moore Street, which is pretty close to the city center. So we'll see what it's like if I'm at the right place. But. Huh? Stay with me and see how it goes. <laughs> Does this go to Moore Street? Yeah. All right, thanks. Very confusing. It has a huge map there with all these different things in here. Not really sure what to do, so. <clears throat> Is this the one there? Yeah. Right. Give it a shot anyway. Not sure if this is the right one, but we'll see. We'll get to experience the tram anyway, so there's one pulling in on this side and we're going. So we'll see. It's supposed to be only two stops. So if it's the wrong way, we'll just get off and cross over on the other side. said it goes there so we'll see came by with the, for the tickets and that and he said no we're going the wrong way so this is like when I was in Belfast on the bus so we're gonna get off at the next race which is Hawthorns cross over to the other side of the tram and we'll head back in it's in the station so oh well we get to see the experience of the trams in Birmingham we'll wait for the next one not the end of the world Get to chill out, relax the old bones. So, they'll probably tell you when the next one is. Um, there we go. See, I don't know which one it is, but. Here's the Hawthorns, West Brom, Albion. So wait here for the... Mm -hmm. Up there it tells you when uh, the next tram's coming. It's the one's uh, expected at 11.54. Uh, and it tells you the street, where the stops are. So there's my Moore Street one. I should be getting in at 12.07. So that's pretty handy. So I have like about 15 minutes to wait. So after doing a little bit of research, this is the trains. Trams run on the other side, so this one goes into the Moore Station, which is in the city center. So I'm in the right one, but it's not the tram, it's the train. I'm just looking at the side, so it's the West uh, 
West Midlands Railway. And that, that'll take me into uh, Moore Street. adventure is Chinatown at the next walk. <laughs> 